everybody. Uh, you're tuning in to another episode of the Dope Girl Dialect mini uh pandemic series. It's Samantha Shade. I'm the goddess. And I am Jodeci, not the group. Welcome back, y'all. Uh, first off, we want to say thank you to everyone who's tuned in so far to our mini series um, and been subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, uh, we appreciate you guys for following us us on another platform because we are on a bunch of things right now right. Um, and <laughs> we are on too many things at the same time uh, but thank you so much um, today we're super excited because we have an amazing uh, TV and film writer and director now um, Felicia Pride with us today hey y'all hey. Hey. <laughs> thank you for having me Super excited to talk to you today. And before we jump into everything, of course, everything that's going on right now, we do want to take a moment um, to just uh, send our support and our love to everyone who's out protesting, um, everything that's going on uh, with the police brutality that still is just nonstop within our community. Um, and any words that you guys have to share um, about everything that's going on? Um, yeah, we're just, we're tired. I, like, at this point, I feel like enough is enough. It's draining, and that's kind of how everything is, like, bubbled up, because you kind of, I don't know if this is us being naive or what, we kind of expect a change to happen, and it never happens. Mm -hmm. So I am, at this point, it's, I don't know what you expect the people to do after, like, years and years of, you know, getting the same results after we've tried, you know? Um, but yeah, my, I'm in solidarity with everyone um, who's out there protesting, donating, um, crowdfunding, you know, all, all of the um, support that we need in order to, you know, make some real effective change. Because at this point, like, I'm just completely disgusted with everything that is mm -hmm. going on um, from our government um, and the police force. It's just it's sad. No matter where you look, we're in New York. Um, and not that we didn't um, expect the, you know, the outrage that was happening in Minneapolis to kind of spill over, but I mean, it's like, what did you expect, you know? So, yeah. I'm really amazed at the amount of states that came together to actually protest. Like, it, it wasn't just isolated in Minneapolis, uh, not Chicago, but um, Cincinnati, Columbus, New York, Florida. Florida. Hey, um, it's man, I'm not surprised because black people are awesome. And if you give us something to, uh, you know, cheer for and fight for, I, think I, I, I love to see it. Looting, I don't know, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I am amazed at the amount of support that it spills over in multiple states. It just tells you how tired our people are. So I thought that was really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And how are you doing, Felicia, like with everything? Uh, it's a lot, you know, I don't, I don't know if I've been able to really articulate how I'm feeling. I think that, you know, one of the things that I hope that we are able to continue to do is take care of ourselves. Um, those of us who are protesting, those of us who are, um, you know, not able to, I just hope that we're able to take care of ourselves mentally and spiritually. This is a lot to be dealing with on top of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I haven't really been able to articulate. I think though um, I'm, I am happy that some of us are able to express our rage um, because <laughs> like years and years of suffocating it, uh, it's just a lot. It's a lot. I have a lot of thoughts that I have not been able to fully articulate, but um, I just hope that we are taking care of ourselves because I know a lot of us are, are alone in this too. You know what I mean? Like we are quarantined alone. Um, we are quarantined with people that we don't want to be quarantined with. It's just a lot happening that I'm hoping that we can extend ourselves some grace um, mm -hmm. and extend you know, protesters and and those who are rebelling, um, the same grace as well. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's um, interesting to see it all play out and unfold. And we've seen it before with Ferguson, and how that sort of I think 
catapulted this major response so quickly uh, this time around. Um, but it's just sad to have to repeat this sort of demonstration over and over and over again. And For centuries. Like, <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it feels like it's just not, what's that Jeff like, what's not clicking with a uh, <laughs> New York's mom, like, it's just not clicking for a lot of people. So, um, again, be safe if you are protesting, if you're organizing things. And um, we're all black if possible. Don't carry your ID. <laughs> There's a lot going out there. So we are armed with, with more information to do these protests better and hopefully more efficiently. So um, we'll be linking more, uh, you know, information on where you can donate, things like that, if you are one of those folks who cannot be on the front lines. Um, so we're going to dive into this episode. Uh, we're super excited to have you, Felicia, because you recently released an amazing short film um, named Tender. And honestly, I think it's a beautiful piece. Um, so we're going to just Thank you. jump right in. Um, tell Thank our you. viewers a little bit about your journey as a writer. Um, and you worked uh, in TV and film, and now your decision to be a director, a little bit about your background. Yeah, um, I uh, originally got started in writing as a journalist. Um, so I was a cultural and entertainment journalist, and then I wrote books. Um, and then I stopped writing for a long time because I, it was a mistake on my part. It was, um, but it took me a long time to sort of crawl back to writing. And one of the things that I did um, five years ago was moved to LA from DC. I'm from Baltimore. Um, and I came here to really focus on trying film and TV. I felt like that was a form that was going to be uh, my thing. Uh, books became too much after a while. Um, and so I've, I got here, I was working in film distribution and really loved my job. And then I got laid off and that really helped me to get refocused on why I came out here. I was 35 years old, <laughs> moving across the country. Um, and I really buckled down and reestablished my relationship with my work, um, which was really important. I, and, and now for me, the work is the most important thing. That's what I prioritize. That's the thing that people can't take away from you is the work and the process of creating the work. They can take everything else, accolades, money, credit, um, but they can't take the work. Uh, so I really focused on reestablishing a healthy relationship with the work. Um, and once I did that, things started to open up for me. So one of the first uh, sort of uh, things that happened was I became a film independent screenwriting lab fellow with a feature film that I came out here with to sell, a film that took me 10 years to sell. And I, and I eventually sold it to Macro. Um, with Kofi Sirabo starring. It was supposed to premiere at South by Southwest. Unfortunately, it did not. Um, uh, so that was my first feature that I sold. And then I would, did not, NBC's Writers on the Verge as a comedy writer. Um, then I sold a drama pilot to um, NBC Universal. And then I got staffed on Queen Sugar. I just finished my second season and I'm now in a new writer's room. Uh, and I recently also sold a erotic romance uh, to Universal as well. So that's a little bit about me. Felicia. Yes, first of all, let me give you my invisible rose. <laughs> 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 that's how you see that's how you do an elevator pitch because people be having such a hard time telling folks what they do <laughs> and, you just listen and to i that. feel so out of it so i'm like oh i hope i'm making sense i'm just uh, i'm uh, yeah but thank y'all thank y'all i receive all of it i receive yeah. it. <laughs> amazing um, so we, um, actually, we all watched um, Tender, and I just need to say, like, it's beautifully shot. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, not in a lot. When I got to the end, I was like, no, I want more. <laughs> I was not Thank ready you. for it to end. Um, but in terms of that specific um, short, what kind of inspired what inspired that? Um, yeah, so um, in, in the selling of my first feature, I really learned that uh, film as a director's medium. And if there, there were stories that I wanted to tell in the film space, um, if I wanted to be part of that vision from start to finish, I really needed to direct. Um, but directing was something I always told myself I couldn't do. I had all these narratives around it, like you can't see like a director, blah, 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 this shit I told myself. Uh, so I kind of moved past my fear. I took a lot of classes. 
Um, and I was like, okay, I feel really confident in these classes. Now I need to take the next step to actually direct something, but I don't want to do too much. So I want to direct something that's really contained and producible. That's two characters, one location, one day. So I actually wrote a pilot called Livelihood that um, is about five Gen X Black women in a uh, Prince George's County, gated community in Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, and one of those characters is Kiana, who is in Tender, played by the phenomenal Pharrell Walker, the older character. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> Lulu is also a character in that pilot. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I love these two characters a lot because both of them are so much of me in so many different ways. Um, and also, I felt like this was the type of story that even though it's contained, it can be impactful. And it also explores themes that I want to explore in my work, um, or that I enjoy exploring in my work from uh, the bonds between Black women, from sexuality, um, to intimacy, emotional intimacy, to class, and um, uh, passion and desire, desire, something I think about a lot for Black women. Um, and then also to have these two different characters, you have an older character, um, again, played by Pharrell Kiana, who, you know, had this major surgery. She's kind of, seems like she's lost her desire for a lot of things. Um, it also seems like she kind of lost her sexual mojo. Um, and then you have this younger character, Lulu, who is queer. She's out, she's proud, she's sexually confident, but not necessarily confident in other parts of her life. And so I was really interested in how these two women could pour into each other. Um, and also that the idea that Lulu's kind of like a younger Kiana, so the duality there of like seeing your younger self. So that's what inspired it. Um, the Kiana character played by Pharrell, I loved her because she was just saying a lot of lines that resonated me currently in the space that I'm in now. Yeah. The one that hit the most is when she was talking about when they were having the conversation about her job. And she was like, I don't care about my job. You know, I just show up, collect my check, and then I'm out. Mm -hmm. And then the Lulu character was just like, you know, I don't want to live that way. I just rather love what I do and stuff. And I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 but I think what's interesting, I love that she brought that up. Thank you, Joe, to see, um, is that, you know, when we're younger, we have, sometimes we have that naivete and passion to be like, yeah, I'm gonna just do what I want to do and live my passion, you know, and then sometimes life hits you in the face in the yep. fucking face. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, wait. So I was interested in sort of, again, exploring like my younger self and my older self, essentially, um, with that so yeah yeah I love that she was just it hit, <laughs> it hit right here and then Lulu gave her the blunt to just oh, that <laughs> <laughs> all made it better right <laughs> um a lot of what I saw in this film was definitely like the expression of love languages and um to me, I literally saw every single love language displayed in this film. And I was just like, yes, because I'm tired of these conversations of people that are just like, I only enjoy getting gifts and mm -mm, I don't like, and I'm like, there's no way, there's no way. And I think right now during this time where we're sort of separated, some of us are not with their loved ones and, um, you know, the feeling of being alone or lo loneliness is sort of like amplified right now. Um, with quarantine. Um, let's talk about a little bit about love languages and, and the short film. Um, uh, was that on your brain when you were writing the concept for this film? Um, was it something that you really wanted to display or um, is it just something that naturally just came across with your story? I mean, I love that. I didn't even think about love languages. So it's so it's so interesting to hear and, and great to hear. Um, I think what I was really thinking about was emotional intimacy um, mm -hmm. and how if we allow ourselves, if we, you know, sort of allow ourselves to pull down the defenses um, and allow someone in, um, that that could be magical. And so that's what I was, that's what I was really interested in. And, and, and just, and the emotional intimacy between women. Yes, the physical intimacy between these two women, um, but also just like the emotional intimacy. And I say that this 
piece is very aspirational for me because I ain't never had a one night stand that looked like this in my life. Um, so <laughs> I would love to, you know what I mean? So I think that's, that that piece is also there, like just aspir- aspirational piece of like being able to like have an experience with a seemingly stranger, right? But then have this crazy emotional connection um, that is so true that is also rooted in a vulnerability that is rooted in feminine power. Um, so I don't know, yeah, I don't know if that answered your answer your question or not. No, but. <laughs> no I, I, what I noticed was that it was very interesting how in the beginning, Kiana was very like guarded and Lulu was just so open to like keep having a conversation with her and not making her feel like she had to leave, which is normally what happens. Like your Uber's outside, like, oh God. <laughs> um, um, like uh, I gotta be at work, even though I don't got work today, like mm-hmm. that type of vibe. Mm-hmm. And then towards the end, when they have that conversation about um, Lulu no longer, you know, writing plays or, or being in plays and Kiana just, and she's, she goes on to say, oh, you know, my ex told me, you know, you know, my play was trash. And so I decided like, you know fell back from it and Kiana's just kind of like fuck that nigga like and now she's like super <laughs> engaged after a whole day of just like un you know unbinding herself and like sort of like loosening up mm-hmm. to uh, the engagement I thought that was dope like uh to see that because right now um in quarantine like I find myself like I I can't do the like one-liners in text messages. I can't do the sign. I can't call. either. I can't do the <laughs> one-liners, girl. I have shut. I can't tell you how many people are cut off in quarantine. I'm just going to say it. Like, I can't do it. Like I'm sending you a whole paragraph and you hitting me with the mm-hmm. Like the mm, I got a mm-hmm via text, and I was just like, um, <laughs> <a lot>. like. <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm, I'm definitely the one-liner person. But since quarantine, I've gotten so much better. And before, like, you cannot get me to FaceTime you. But now that's all I want people to do. Just like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm so definitely you- dodging calls. So. <laughs> no. Like, I mean, you got voice note and all that good stuff. You don't have to, like, literally be on the phone with someone all day, 24-7. But, you know. But I thought that was very beautiful to see, like, the sort of growth between the two characters. And definitely, like, Kiana is someone who I probably would have been in the past, like, very much like, all right, let me just avoid the situation and, like, to spare my own feelings. And it, I, cause you can see very much how that can hinder you from, you know, experiencing a beautiful, like, relationship, whether that's friendship or, you know, something more, you know, intense. Um, so I thought that was... That's what I got from the film. You know? I mean, I would love to hear your the love languages, like how you saw that playing out. I would love to hear that. Yes. Yeah, so um, there's a part where um, uh, Lulu is giving Kiana a book, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Oh yeah, here's this book because you mentioned that you know, you know, you write poetry," mm-hmm. and so. Um, that's one, you know, just like paying attention to conversations and then gifting someone something related to that. Um, I'm trying to see here. Physical touch, of, of course, was another one. Um, her caressing her scar uh, from the surgery and them diving into that conversation. Um, the dancing moments, which is just like, sometimes you just want to chill and vibe, be quiet. And that moment of just like, it's getting dark, let's put on the mood light, shaking some ass, ain't shit to do. Yes. <laughs> let's order some food. Like, I, I love that. Like, food is another love language, like feed me. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I think that's my love language. Yeah, feed yeah, me. I, I just thought it was beautiful to actually see that, especially right now where we're just like in a state of just like, being still and I think seeing that displayed on the screen sort of like reminded me of like damn I need to tap into that I need to you know take a moment to give that to someone and also like Mm -hmm. hopefully receive it back Mm -hmm. um I thought that was so sweet like the 15 minutes what a wonder it can do (laughs) so I think you just said something that made me think when you said you know give something and hopefully receive it back I think and then you were also talking about how Lulu was like 
trying to get her to stay. I just think it's so interesting how Lulu was giving and almost it felt like without the need to receive, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Or without the expectation of receiving, right? Um, Which then allowed her to be vulnerable enough to, to, um, connect with Kiana. So I just, I, I just thought about that after you talked about it. That's, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. It, it had my mind going. I was just like, wow, like, I wish I had that type of experience right now. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. You and me both. I'm telling you, I'm like writing to see the change I want to see in my life. Right? Right? You know? <laughs> Uh, so. Write it down. Got to write it down, though. Yes. Right. Um, and you, um, you actually mentioned that it only took you guys a mm-hmm. shooting day. Yeah, I mean that's all the money we had was to shoot a twelve-hour day, um, and so we made it work. You know, um, I tr- attribute that to a fantastic. We had just a fantastic crew. Um, and my fantastic producer Regina Holes was like a twenty-three-year-old black female phenom, um, writer, director, actor, uh, producer, and uh, the way that she pulled together this shoot was so seamless. Um, And then having Pharrell and Trishana just be in it and like just not require a lot of does not even require a lot. Like it, it was just such a blessing. Um, so it, and it was just a, it was a great day too. You know what I mean? Like I talked about the dance scene, which is one of my favorite scenes was the last scene we shot. And it was just such a great way to end the day because it was like, you know, light for, for Trishana and Pharrell who had just had this, we had shot the bedroom scene prior to that. So I had like this very, intense scene um and then like for the crew and people were laughing and having fun and then the fact that they just went there you know what I mean like it was like they were by themselves but it was like 20 (laughs) people in the room so I just um I just feel really blessed I feel really blessed and grateful um so let's get into a little bit about you know the promotion you mentioned that you were supposed to debut this film at South South by which of course, got canceled. They're like one of the major festivals to like, you know, pull the plug um, yeah. uh, due to COVID. Um, so let's talk about your promotion for this film. Um, how has it been um, garnering attention um, towards this project in the midst of a pandemic? Like we yeah. might have some viewers who are like struggling with the idea of even, even putting out content during this time. So um, yeah. if you, you share. Yeah, absolutely. How- um, so it was another film that was supposed to premiere at South by, um, which was Really Love, which is a romantic drama that takes place in DC, uh, directed by Angel Christy Williams. Um, but this film premiered at Outfest, which was like a week before South by Southwest, um, at Outfest Fusion. And it was going to do the festival circuit. Like we had, um, I, and I was, so, was going to be on Hot Girl Hiatus. Let me tell you, I was going to be in the streets. <laughs> traveling with tender i had my essence tickets like i was just going to be traveling with the film and living my best life um and then once we were sort of in the pandemic i just had something just move through my spirit was like you know release it and i was like what and then luckily i have a team who we just get shit done i was like it was like a wednesday i was like let's release it and then we released it the next week. We pulled together a campaign um, to release it in that, that next week. And we kind of, sh- we structured it to be a month long campaign that we would um, really go hard in promoting the film because I truly believe as someone who used to work in distribution and marketing, like it is my duty if everyone poured themselves into this project that we put in energy so people see it. Um, I feel very strongly about that. So um, yeah, we, we, we pulled together this campaign and I gotta say it's been <laughs> gratefully overwhelming because you just never know how people are going to receive your work. And I haven't done something like this before in that releasing a film when you can actually get feedback in real time, <laughs> like people be on Twitter watching it talking to you, adding you. I've never had that experience before. So it's been amazing. Like I am so full, Um, but also uh, it's, it's shown like you, I know because, because I write for black women, but I know that we need more stories. Like that's, that's, I know that, but this film, the release of this film has really reconfirmed for me how much we need more Black female stories, how much we need more Black queer 
women's stories. Like it was just, it's just really kind of hit me in the face. Um, and so for that, uh, we made the decision to turn Tender into a feature film. Um, and it's, it's scary because <laughs> features take a fucking lot. They take a lot to make. Um, but I was just like, man, we got to contain this story. People want to see more. There's something here. Um, so we made that decision last week. And um, yes, yeah, so we're going to keep pushing forward with um, the tender story and see what happens. Um, I don't know what's going to happen between production and just the fact that features are hard to make, especially features that are going to be too, you know, Black women loving. Um, but <laughs> I'm, com I'm committed. You know what I mean? I'm committed to, to at least try to do everything I can to make it happen so yeah well we're rooting for you I'm excited yeah thank you thank you definitely and stories like that need to be heard um and honestly like we're here to support you and promote it and like get it out there because it's definitely needed right now and um Jody see you had questions about uh crowdfunding yes 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 um Typically on the show, we do like a DIY section. And I wanted to get your advice, particularly on crowdfunding, because me personally, I have no experience. Um, <laughs> you know, outside of Google, which is my favorite place to hang out. Um, but some of the stuff that I looked up tip-wise, um, it was talking about, of course, do your research, um, choosing the right platform, um, knowing your target audience, creating great marketing materials, setting realistic goals, and make the reward worth wild. And then the last one was get personal. Uh, what was your experience as far as like crowdfunding, crowdfunding and getting the funds to produce this project and get it made? I mean, those tips are actually uh, on point. Um, I crowdfunded something before that was not successful in that we did the Indiegogo where you don't have to make, like you still get the money if you don't, reach your goal. And I realized that there does need to be, it helps tremendously to have a ticking clock. Um, and so even though I didn't do Indiegogo or Kickstarter, I did GoFundMe because I did not want to deal with um, perks. Um, the ticking clock was we set our production date. So we launched our crowdfunding campaign on August 4th, um, but we had set our production date for August 31st. So no matter what, whether we raise this money or not, we were like, we have a production date. And that really helped with part of the storytelling of our journey. Um, I also created a hybrid campaign because I know that sometimes people are have crowdfunding fatigue in terms of giving. So I was like, you know what, why do I offer um, these virtual, what I call virtual chats? I charged $25. I did a series of three um, where people could get something for their money, but all the proceeds went to the production of Tender. So I did one on um, pitching. I did one on being a professional TV and film writer. I did one on um, developing your writing process. So that had so that that was for people who wanted to give but wanted something for their money. And then I set up a GoFundMe. And it's funny because I just threw the GoFundMe up. I was like, ah, you know, some people may want to give, but that was like the most successful part of our campaign was that part of it. And then I also did fiscal sponsorship for like high net individuals who, um, you know, had wanted a tax tax deductible wanted to be able to give tax with a tax deductible mm, y'all know what i'm saying so <laughs> that, those are like my three areas and then in terms of get personal like my you know the thing that i really um shared and made part of the storytelling of the crowdfunding campaign made part of the narrative drive of the campaign was that i always told myself i could direct and i feel like a lot of people tell themselves things that they cannot do right so that was sort of the thing that I think a lot of our family we call it the tender fam like really were able to grab onto was like when we tell ourselves we can't do it what happens when we erase that narrative and, and go for it um, so that was me getting personal and then marketing materials our marketing materials were fucking unparalleled and they were all created by amber brown who is my right hand um and she created every asset that we had for the campaign and it really gave you a look and feel for what we were going for for tender like it was like oh like the softness the vulnerability um black women just all over the place you know so <laughs> that that helped tremendously too in terms of marketing material. So I would say those those tips were definitely on point. And I actually did a um, hour long case study on Tinder mm -hmm. last weekend that now is available on Vimeo. So you can check it out because we we I, 
in partnership with Black Film Space, we go from writing script all the way through release and we talk about crowdfunding. Dope. Question, as a writer, how did you kind of like find your writer's voice? Like, you know, when people write it, yeah. you, you kind of know this person wrote that, that person write that. Like, how did you kind of get into the space where like, this is Felicia's work? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so because I started, so my first published piece ever was in 2001. It was a review of Mary J. Blige's No More Drama album. I was, I didn't know a thing about music criticism, but I was like, I know Mary. I can write about Mary. And <laughs> so my, my sort of, that, that was the time where like hip hop journalism was so big and you had an oh. aesthetic with hip hop journalism, right? You had the Joe Morgans, you had the Greg Tates, you had the um, Dream Hamptons who were crafting Daniel Smith. You had, they were crafting a new style of journalism, right? That essentially inserted yourself into <laughs> the picture um, and also had a like bravado, had a, a swag to it. Um, and so that's where I, a lot of my voice came from both that journalism, the hip hop journalism, but also MCs just in general, um, because they were the first storytellers that, you know, before I knew Baldwin, I didn't know Baldwin really to like the 11th grade. You know what I mean? I knew Big Daddy Kate, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so a lot of like my writing aesthetic came from that. And then it also just comes from like me, uh, my, my production company is called Felix and Andy, which is named after my mother and my father. And they are complete opposites in a lot of ways. And so my writing is also dichotomous because it represents these two sides of myself, um, as well as just the, my life experiences. So, and it's funny because my coworker was like, every time I read your work, there's always a line in there that I'm like, that's Felicia. Or there's always a Baltimore line or something like that. Um, and that I'm proud of that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so um, Tender, you know, plays with some of those themes in that way of, or as, at least that aesthetic of like the dichotomy and, um, you know, so yeah, that's how I found it was through influences essentially, you know, people who influenced me. But I gotta tell you, voice is probably, I think one of the most important things about writing because before I learned structure, so when I came out here with that feature that needed a lot of structural work, the thing that I got, was able to get some traction on was the fact that I had a voice already from my previous writing. So the more that you can do to strengthen your voice, and I think sometimes it has to do too with uh, self-work and being able to be vulnerable on the page. Um, the more work that we can do to cultivate our voice, the I think that's even more important than learning structure because we can always learn structure, that's easy. But voice, cultivating voice is, is key. Oh, okay. Yep, that was my big question. <laughs> that's, my, that's my big question. <laughs> um, any tips for um, anybody who might be a little bit nervous about um, putting up that link to promote their work during a time like this? Like, would you just say, just go for it? I mean, that shit is scary. It's scary. Um, I stay nervous still <laughs> uh, with certain... <laughs> Uh, parts of the release um, but I mean I think but then um, again the other side of me is like I feel very strongly that we made it like <laughs> we poured all this time and energy into people deserve to see it um, the one thing that my therapist tells me is that when you hide you deny the world your brilliance and mm -hmm. I think that that is also important. We need to remind ourselves that as like, well, we high, we're denying the world our brilliance, and that's selfish. You know what I mean? That's selfish. If you have created something that can be of service to one person, that's a big deal. And service could mean making them laugh, making them cry, making them throw something across the room, whatever the case, especially in these times, we need to feel, you know? And so um, as an artist, that's part of our duty. That's part of our work. And the, the, the shit that comes with it, the, the vulnerability of being ex exposed, the, the comments, everybody got an opinion, all that, that comes with the duty of being an artist. Um, so. That's a word. <laughs> that really is. <laughs> like, and I completely get that. You, you know, sometimes you're nervous, you don't want to share, but you have to, that's what, that was, that's your purpose, you know? Um, I love that. Yeah. I, I'm gonna take that and use that for myself personally because sometimes you know you're just like ah, you're nervous about how the world is gonna receive whatever it is that you have, you've created but you gotta take that step I think 
I think also what's helpful, what's helped me is to release expectations um, and to only control what I can control, right? I can't control how people are going to receive the film. I can only control the making of it. And honestly, that's the most important thing, the process, the joy of it, right? Um, so that's helped tremendously. And I think that's helped because I stay in awe because I've kind of released expectations about things i'm just like wow five people watched it Shit. <laughs> I am be, you know over the book like so that has helped as well as like just releasing the expectations that we have around the reception of our art definitely uh well we're at the point of the show where uh actually is a new segment where we do rapid rapid fire questions so we ain't gonna hit you with too many at once but <laughs> Uh, we'll go around with the question and you can just give us whatever comes to your okay. you know, mind first. Um, and so my question is right now, what is your go-to snack for quarantine? Uh, barbe- kettle barbecue potato chips. You know, the ones where they do them, make them in the kettle, the red bag, the red yeah. bag. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. That's Those good. and fudge stripe cookies. I have not had fudge stripe cookies since I was like 10 years old. And now I have like four packs of them in my <laughs> I'm like hoarding them. Yeah. Oh, that's oh my gosh. a good snack. Those cookies are awesome. Aren't they good? But they're a problem though. Yes. Oh man. They're a problem. I know me, so I'm not, I don't even eat the, like, the sweets like that anymore, but I would finish a pack of those. I haven't had them. So they are a problem. <laughs> Okay, give me some later. Oh, have some, have an extra two for me. (laughs) My rapid fire question is three items that you didn't think were essential, but are now, now that we're in quarantine. Uh, That I didn't think were essential. Um, Cinnamon, because I Mm. can't find any. Uh, Bathroom cleaner. That's important. Uh, and hand sanitizer. Yes. Very essential now. Very essential. <laughs> All right. Have you discovered anything new about yourself in quarantine? Um, uh, have I discovered anything new about myself? Well, I can say that now I'm on a... a now, now I know that I need outdoor space wherever I live. Like quarantine has taught me like you need a balcony, a patio, <laughs> a backyard, something because I love to be outside so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also love my privacy. And then also uh, we in a pandemic. So like an outdoor space is really, really important and I've learned that about myself that I need it all right favorite Mariah Carey song <laughs> girl <laughs> uh visions vision of love I got a vision of love yeah Mariah's universal <laughs> see just change your name to Mariah not the not the same like, seriously thank <laughs> Um, well, we, we're not going to hold you a little uh, too long, but just wanted to give you the opportunity to like plug anything that you need to plug, website, um, ways people can connect with you and support you and uh, your progress. Thank you. Um, so if you want to watch Tender Movie, you can do so at tendermovie.com. We also, if you love the music in Tender, uh, Asha Santi and Boom Scat are the artists behind the music and the film, and they have curated a an extended soundtrack on spotify which you can also find at tendermovie.com um i also am on instagram and um oh tender movies on instagram too at tender movie but i'm also on instagram and twitter at felicia pride and uh for those creators creatives out there i run a free service called the create daily i've run it since 2012 where i send a free newsletter every week that is chock full of grants, programs, fellowships, opportunities to help us create daily. It's geared towards underrepresented creators. Um, so it's free to sign up at thecreatedaily.com. Uh, amazing. We'll definitely have all of those links in our bio as well. So you Thank can you. 
custom. Uh, Felicia, thank you so much for joining us and taking time. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, definitely gonna rewatch Tender. <laughs> get back in my feels because it's so good <laughs> thank you and but thank, thank you for you this again. platform too i appreciate it i was talking to we trying girl we trying we out here. i love it <laughs> i love um, it thank you. thank you to everybody for tuning in again of course uh be sure to like comment and subscribe to our youtube channel as well as subscribe to all of our um uh where we put all the, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> all our podcasts, <laughs> all our podcasts, you know, Spotify, Spotify, Apple, Google Play, all that good okay. stuff. <laughs> yes, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Um, thank you again for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next episode, guys. Thank y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.